Today we're going to tie a classic dry fly green drake pattern. We're going to start off with the Tiemco 100 dry fly hook and some uni, 8 or 6 aught olive thread. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to tie in our moose tail. We're going to take a chunk of black moose body hair and we're going to put it into our hair stacker, stack it all up, even up those tips and we're going to tie it in down the shank of the hook. And I like my tail to be about half of the length of the shank of the hook. We're going to tie it in about a third of the way back from the eye so that you're about two-thirds up from the back. And then we're just going to wrap down on top of it as I work my way back down the shank of the hook. And then we can work forward. And you can trim out the, the butt ends. Now we're ready to tie in our wing. For that I'm just going to use some gray or dun colored deer hair. And I'm going to take a fairly generous clump. I like nice poofy wings on this fly. Green drakes have pretty large prominent wings. So I'm going to take a fairly big clump there and I'm going to pluck out all the fuzzy fibers. just leaving kind of the tips and we're going to put those into our hair stacker and give it a good stacking try to get the tips of those fibers as even as we can and we can pull them out and we want them to face tips forward just like so. I'm going to tie them in so that they're about the length of the entire body. Fairly tall wing on the green drake. So I'm just going to take my thread, get it started, and bite down and capture all that deer hair. Then I'm going to come in back behind here before I let go of that clump and just trim out trim out those butt ends. Now the deer hair is going to want to move on you so I'm just going to wrap through those butt ends a couple of times and lock them down to the base of the hook shank. That'll help keep that deer hair from moving as I now go into forming the wing. I'm just going to wrap forward a couple more wraps. I'm going to take all that deer hair, I'm going to pull it upwards take my thread, I'm going to sneak underneath all of it and just kind of form a little thread wedge wrapping up against it. If you get a few fibers trapped, don't worry about it, you can pluck or trim those out. And I'll wrap for just a little bit more. Effectively what I'm doing is kind of pinching that fur together as I wrap in front and behind it. Now I can take those wings and just kind of split them and lay some wraps in between them. Now the next thing I'm going to do is just take my thread and I'm actually going to build little mini posts around each wing with my thread. So I'm going to basically pinch the wing and wrap around it a few times. And all I'm really doing is kind of building like a, a parachute post on each wing. And when that's, once I've got one of them done take my thread and jump back to the shank of the hook and then I'm going to do the other wing here. And 
This takes a little bit of practice. And I can draw the, both those wings together. You can use a little bit of wax to sometimes help you. And then I'll build the post just a little more. After I've kind of split them initially, I'll creep that post up. Just a little higher. I got a little too much thread here. There we go, and there's both the wings, and then you can kind of manipulate them into place. Now we're ready to tie in our ribbing. For our ribbing, I like to use a little bit of Uniflex. It has a little bit of translucence to it. Um, the old timers used to use a lot of thread, or thick thread. We're going to use some tan Uniflex. This has a little more translucence to it, makes the bug look a little more lifelike. We're just going to wrap that down basically the body of the fly. Now we're ready to dub a body. We're going to use some super fine olive dubbing. And we're going to start it off fairly sparse and thin and kind of get thicker as we work forward on the body. I just kind of add it in little, little tiny chunks rather than all adding it all at once. And the green drake has a fairly chunky body as well. So I'm going to build a body that is slightly tapered. just because that bug is so bulky, kind of has shoulders. So I'm going to taper that to kind of imitate the bug. And once you're almost there, you can finish off with a few touches of dubbing and you want to stop just short of your wing you can see there I've left some space by the wing and that's for our hackle before we get to our hackle we're gonna wrap our body I'm gonna take that uni flex and stretch it as I wrap it and spiral it forward you can see I'm getting a nice good clean segmentation and once I get to my wings I can capture that uniflex oh, my wing keeps getting in the way so we'll try that over again here I'm just going to basically fold that wing forward and kind of out of the way for now I also counter wrap this, which means I'm wrapping the opposite way that I dubbed the body, and that way this uniflex will kind of stand out and sit on top of the dubbing rather than kind of blend into it. I can capture that uniflex and trim it out of the way. 
I'm going to leave my wings folded forward just a little bit as I tie in my hackle. Then I'll write them up and uh, stand them up. So we're going to take some whiting hackle. I'm just going to roughly measure it out so I get the right size. I like to use two feathers since this is such a large fly. It'll build up a nice dense hackle for you. I'm going to strip off some of the fibers at the base of the quill there. It gives me something to tie into. And to measure it, I just simply take the feather, wrap it underneath the fly, and I want those barbs to stick just past basically the tip of the hook. Now we're going to tie these both in at the same time. Trim out the stems. Cover up the tips of the stems to give yourself a nice smooth base. Now I'm going to stand those wings back up. If you get a few fibers that were trapped earlier, you can just pluck them out of there. I'm going to take my thread, jump to in front of them, and I'm going to continue laying down a nice smooth thread base ramp for my hackle to sit on. And I can take my thread and just let it sit at the eye. And then for the last time, I'll straighten out my my wings and we're ready to wrap the hackle. I'm just going to take that first turn right in front of my dubbing and then work my way forward all the way up to those wings and I'm just going to gently jump in front of those wings and try to get in front of them as close as you can so I kind of fold them back out of the way nice and gently and then I wrap right in front of them and work your way forward up to the eye where you can then capture it with your thread get in and trim as close as you can without trimming your thread trim out any extra fibers, there's always a couple of them that seem to get trapped and then you can lay down a few finishing wraps. And then we're ready to whip finish. And you can fluff it up, find any little fibers that aren't cooperating with you. I have one tail fiber that's being difficult. I'll just pluck it out of there. And that is a finished classic green drake dry fly. Fairly easy fly to tie. Not too difficult. Hardest part's probably those those wings. And that is the classic green drake. You can watch this video on YouTube. You can also buy this video and download it to any device or any computer on Vimeo on demand. That is the classic green drake.